All right, guys, let's talk about some unique end mills and cutters that you probably don't have, that you probably should have. This is one of the ugliest things I think I've ever seen in my life, but I tried one the other day, and i got to tell you, it was a win. The other one that you've probably never seen, or maybe you have, is this guy right here. This looks like something from a horror film. This is called a carbide burr cutter, and if you work with a lot of this material, all you knife guys probably recognize this. This is half inch linen phenolic. Cutters like this are ideal for material like this. Linen phenolic, glass filled phenolic, epoxy based cloth laminates like this. These can be brutal on conventional cutters like this and generate a tremendous amount of heat. Believe it or not, I mean it looks like wood but there are, there are countless layers of cloth here. This is cloth. This is LE phenolic, linen epoxy phenolic. All of these layers of cloth are separated with a layer of epoxy resin and are put under tremendous pressure and squished down and there you have it. This stuff is like glass. Well, let's say it's glass hard but it's incredibly tough and it's not going to crack like, like a harder solid material. The laminate gives it amazing strength and heat resistance, but cutting it can be a challenge. So this guy right here is the way to go. If you're cutting G10 or LE Phenolics, this cutter will walk through it like you would not believe. I have cut literally miles of material with this, with this cutter, this exact cutter, and this thing is as sharp as the day I got it. It's absolutely incredible. A friend of mine recommended that a long time ago, and I'm glad he did because it has saved my bacon. If you guys out there, you knife makers out there, are looking for this material and can't source it, I have it here in this, uh, I don't know, brown you want to call it? I also have it in black, usually half inch. So, if you need some, give me a call. Now, the benefit to this particular cutter, this is a two-flute, right-hand cut, left-hand spiral. And it does turn this way, and you can see the spiral forces the cutting edge to come down from the top. Or on a conventional cutter, the two flute here, as it spins, it lifts. You can see it goes up. Now the benefit to using a cutter like this versus a cutter like this, if you're cutting a thin material and it's doing that clapping sound, jumping around, plastic, thin aluminums, whatever, a cutter like this is going to want to lift it. A cutter like this is going to want to drive it down. Just like a karate chop. Okay? This is going to want to drive it down. The other benefit is if you're cutting some softer materials that have a tendency to want to explode as the cutter is passing through it, like wood, like a veneer plywood, this is the baby to use. Now this is a two flute, like I said. And this guy here is a one flute. Now this looks like something that you ground on your first day of your apprenticeship and uh, threw out the window so nobody would see it. But somebody grabbed the hold of it and figured out what to do with it. And there you go. So this is a two flute, right hand cut, left hand spiral, single flute, right hand cut, left hand spiral. It's exactly the same thing. It comes down, it shears down on the material. And these are made for exceptionally high RPM, several thousand RPMs you drive these things through the material. Let's set up some veneer plywood, run these conventional cutters through it, see if it explodes the surface off of it, and then we're going to swap over to these guys. And then we're going to put down a piece of thin material on top of that and compare the performance, the chatter performance, the lift performance with these different style cutters. And then we're going to put one of these in. We're going to cut some of this, and we're going to make a lot of dust. I might even show you my homemade dust collector from my mill, which I got at Home Depot. It works like a charm. Stick around. In order to establish a baseline for the difference in the finish that you can achieve with these different cutters, the first pass I'm going to take is with a conventional two-flute carbide high spiral end mill. We're going to go a quarter inch deep. This is a birch veneer plywood. And with this type of cutter, I can expect a lot of damage along the course of this cut. So 2,000 RPM, two flute, carbide, right hand cut, right hand spiral.
it is probably a good idea to vacuum this stuff away as opposed to blow it off. I'll take a second and do that. Okay, now that is exactly what I had hoped this cutter would do to this material. You can see that it has lifted, and if you were doing something critical with this particular veneer, you probably just step back from the machine and gasp. Anyway, let's put the reverse flute cutter in there. I'm going to go with the two flute reverse quarter cutter, and we'll see exactly what that does right alongside this cut. Okay, for sake of illustration, as it turns, like I said on the bench, you can see the cutting flute coming down from the top. And there is a flute every 180 degrees. So I expect almost no crown on this one. This will also be a quarter of an inch deep. 2,000 RPM. Let's check it out. When you turn it on, it's going to look like it's spinning backwards, so don't be deceived by that. Make sure you still continue to run the machine forward. I know when we vacuum this off, that's going to be beautiful, so just hang in there. Check it out. All right, well, those results are undeniable. Two flute conventional, two flute reverse helix. And that is just absolutely spectacular. There is no raised edge on that whatsoever. Let's move over just a little bit more. Take the two flute, replace it with a single flute. Try again and see if it makes any difference. Okay, this is the single flute. Once again, cutting edge is coming down from the top. And I'm doing this demonstration on wood just to demonstrate the downforce of the cutting. The ideal reason for this video is so that we can start cutting thin material and I can show you that these cutters are fantastic at keeping material on deck. So it's not gonna lift and chatter and jump around and bang like, I've had a lot of questions about that offline so I figured I would address it. But let's see how this one performs compared to the other two just for yucks. Same thing, 2000 RPM, single flute, 250D. But without being right on top of that, the difference is really hard to tell. So let's put it on the bench and magnify it. Take a look. Okay, I say the difference in the top burr. The standard metal cutting bit just tore this stuff apart, but the bits intended to do softer materials performed flawlessly. The inside edge of the two flute here, I can see that the channel is a little bit hairier. You can see it right there, I mean, it's undeniable. The single flute is just beautiful. Top surface is fine. I'm sure it wouldn't take a whole lot of effort to knock that back off of there if you went in there with some real fine emery or took a second pass through it. But I would say out of this particular foot race, the single flute, uh, right hand cut left hand spiral is your winner, followed by the two flute right hand cut left hand, and the quarter inch conventional high spiral carbide just failed miserably.
didn't fail. It cut it, but it, you know, if you didn't want to crack your veneer, then you just failed. So there you go. Keep that in mind if you're cutting plastics. I know this cuts really well with plastics. If you don't want to spend time deburring the plastic, don't create the burr. All right, let's put a piece of LE phenolic, or excuse me, let's put this back in the machine. I'm going to put a piece of eighth inch acrylic on this, and I'm going to come across the eighth inch acrylic and see if we can get it to jump around and try the exact same thing with these reverse flute cutters and see what it does as far as lifting and performance. Okay, now the real reason for the reverse flute cutters. Although you saw how they perform in wood, and I think that's helpful because every once in a while you're going to do some wood in your shop. This is a piece of 0.1 acrylic, and you can see that it's not held down very strong. Now for all you guys that are going to say, move the parallel closer to the edge, or sandwich it between other material, you're absolutely right. But this is a worst case scenario demonstration, and we're going to run this two flute. This is the two flute high spiral right hand cut, uh, right hand spiral carbide end mill. We're going to run it across conventional end climb cut about let's say 70 thou into the part and we're going to try to get this to jump around and chatter and I think it's going to be quite successful quite fast so let's uh, get this thing to bounce around to establish a baseline on poor performance and we'll move over to the other cutters okay I know this piece is going to scream up a storm so I'm going to voice over this is uh, 70 thousandths into the part, 1.75 millimeters, 2,000 RPM, conventional pass. Watch the material jump around as the cutter gets into it. You can see the trailing edge of the material is starting to vibrate. And it's pretty clear by the waste material sitting on the part that we're cutting that this is jumping around. It's pretty obvious when you're standing there jumping around to it. It's it makes quite a bit of noise. If this was a very delicate feature, it would probably break off. Uh, for safety, I'm going to turn the cutter off while I inspect the edge. The face could be a better finish if the parallel were moved closer to the edge and that uh, jumping around was eliminated. Not a whole lot of chipping top and bottom, but that's going to be driven by the material. Let's move in another 1.75 millimeters and do a climb cut and see if it makes any difference. I did observe some chipping on the bottom of the part this time. And watch the end of the piece as the cutter gets close. You can see that it is starting to jump around almost uh, double the thickness of the material. There was a lot of movement there. The finish did start to deteriorate as it got towards the end because of the lifting. But the upper edge, not too bad. Bottom edge did demonstrate some chipping. All right, baseline established. This is the single flute, left hand spiral, right hand cut. We're going to go 70 thou into it like we did with the quarter inch carbide. We're going to go with a conventional approach initially. And let's see what we get. I do expect this to push down and not make a whole lot of noise. I'll be surprised if there's any lift or noise whatsoever. Let's give it a shot. All right, keep your eye on the very corner of the material and watch for it to bounce. As the cutter makes contact, the material stays quite flat. There's minimal movement. And if you keep your eye on the chips that are laying on the surface of the material, You see that uh, about an inch forward of the cutter, it's jumping around a little bit, but the stuff laying on the surface is staying quite still. I'm very pleased with that. So that does demonstrate that there is considerable down force and not a lifting and dropping rebound. Upper and lower edges of the material still look pretty good, but I got to say that that noise had to be uh, the loudest of the cuts so far. No loading of the cutter, which is good. Let's go another 70,000 to the part and climb cut this.
Now I've gone to voiceover on these particular cuts because this is screaming like you would not believe. It is making a, a incredibly high shrill. And you can still see that even in a climb cut there is not much movement. And the chips laying on the surface are staying still, which is good. It does indicate a downforce on that plate. It is not lifting it, which is good. I would think for a thinner wall or a web type design on a piece of plastic, you could be uh, assured that you're not going to crack it. So watch for the very corner to lift as we're coming off. And it stayed right where it belonged. Very nice. I would have to say without a hundred percent, without a doubt, the performance difference is minimal. Climb versus conventional. The edge is still really nice. Feels a little bit more material returned to the surface. And I think you guys know what that means. It's just not a very smooth finish like you would hope to get on a finished pass. I was looking for a whole lot quieter guys. Looks like these cutters are more suited for the woodwork than for the plastic not lifting work, but they certainly are more beneficial at times. Let's put the double flute in there just for yucks. See what it does. Okay, quarter inch, two flute, right hand cut, left hand spiral, 70 thou deep, 2000 RPM. Let's check it out. Keep an eye on the underside of the corner on the leading edge of this and you'll see as the cutter moves into the material it blows the bottom corner off right there on the trailing edge. You see there's a half moon crescent shape pulled out. This is relatively loud. I'm putting my finger there because it's making a lot of noise but it doesn't appear that anything's jumping around and the chips laying on the surface of the part would support that. I am advancing this plastic out from underneath that parallel between these cutters so that the amount of flex potential remains the same. Conventional approach, still a little bit of noise. Let's go with the climb approach, 70,000 deep, opposite direction. See if it shuts it up. The noise difference in the climb cut to the conventional cut is about the same. You can still see that the surface of the material has some movement, but not too bad. The finish that it's leaving behind is not spectacular, and you can blame that on the rigidity. When you have movement, it translates to the surface finish, and it's just not ideal. And see the crack in the corner? Let's see if this takes it off. Yes, it does. Removed it quite nice. I would still like to see a finer finish on that, but the top and bottom surfaces are not cracked, so it did work out well. But the single flute, in my opinion, was the better of the surface finishes between the two cutters. Okay, to better demonstrate the down spiral benefit, we're going to have the two flute quarter inch first. We're going to conventional across the front, trough down the center, and we're going to climb across the back. And you can expect three different burr patterns on this. As this conventional cuts across the front, it's going to lift a burr up and it's going to roll a burr out. So this edge right here will have two burrs, one on the top and one on the side. The trough down the center is going to have burrs on both sides of the upper edges. And the climb cut across the back is going to have a burr on the top edge, but the back side edge at the base of the cutter is going to be almost perfect because the rotation of the cutter is driving the material in as it's cutting as opposed to exploding it out. And you can see this part. If this was a production part, I'd be pulling my hair out and writing some more code to deburr that in the machine because that's pretty ugly. Let's take a look at the burrs. As promised, the front side has a burr exploded off the bottom edge. 
because it's rotating out and lifting up. So you have two birds to deal with there. You can see it and feel it, trust me. Now looking at the back, that one burr is driven into the part, therefore it is sheared off and non-existent. That's almost a razor sharp edge right there. It's absolutely ideal. But there's nothing you can do about these top burrs. When you have a right hand spiral, right hand cut, it is going to lift like that. Sharper the cutter, the better when you're working with Delrin or any other plastic. And I've always liked two flutes over four. So let's put one of them single lip cutters in here and see what happens. And uh, you can bet that the bottom is going to be absolutely atrocious, but the top burr is going to be almost non-existent. Let's take a look. Okay, this is the single flute reverse helix cutter. We're going to do the same exact path. Conventional cut across the front, a full contact trough down the center, and a climb across the back. We're about 300 deep. This is a 250 diameter projected. You're not going to be able to measure it with a micrometer, but that's what they call it. Now, any unfavorable result that I could expect right now, I would think that the cutter is probably going to pack up and explode going down the middle. I'll be really shocked if it doesn't. Other positives should be an almost absentee burr across the top because of the down shear. And the climb cut in the back should be almost perfect as opposed to these two. This one will be, I would say, no burr along the top trough in the center. But on the front, you can still expect the burr to kick out because of the rotation. Let's see if I'm right. Alright, this one's going to warrant a closer look on the bench. I think the advantage of the down cut is going to be clear and blatantly obvious. you got a close up on that. Let's go to the bench and take a look. Okay, let's take a look at the quarter inch two flute first. I would say it's a real nice finish on that. We do have raised edges. You can see the edge right there. Right there, you can see it across the back as well. So with this conventional spiral, it is going to raise a burr. The front also has some protrusion from the rotation. The back does not. The rotation did make a huge difference in the back. The finish is good, but the burrs are going to cost you some time on the bench. Now I purposely made a thinner wall in the back on this one so I could tell which was the climb and which was the conventional. Conventional cut looks really good. Across the top, I think you can tell immediately that there are no no raised edges on the top of this part. The old fingernail test. Nope, we are golden. Absolutely beautiful. Conventional cut appears to have given a better finish. A little bit of noise at the bottom. But that's a fairly substantial cut for how rigid that cutter is in the back. We can blame a lot of this chatter on the wall thickness. This is probably moving around quite a bit. It is fairly flexible as I sit here. There's no shelf burr pushed out the back. And realistically nothing pushed out the front either. So those reverse flute cutters work very well. This is another sample that I did with the two flute left hand spiral. And it tore it up pretty good in the front. That's the conventional cut. So it was digging in as it was coming around. Minimal burrs on the top, minimal burrs on the front. Definitely not impressed with the surface finish on the side cutting performance. The back I did two passes. I did a, an initial 200 deep and then I went back and did a 10th out deep. Some of the noise from the original pass 
the first pass was showing through, but it still has that burr on the bottom. These cutters are not known to give decent surface finishes uh, on deck. But there is a cutter called a combination cutter that will give you better results if you want to look that one up. I have no use for those, but those are pretty interesting. They give you a floor cut and a wall cut and a top surface uh, down shear, and it's an interesting cutter. All right, let's grab a piece of Ellie Phenolic to show you what that burr cutter does. It's pretty cool to have in your box. Take a look. All right, let's take a look at the performance of the half-inch burr cutter in the Ellie Phenolic. I'm going to run this at 2,000 RPM as well. I'm going to cut this piece in half, so this is a full bite cut. And uh, as you can see, it really doesn't matter conventional or climb on a full depth through the center. So let's see what happens. I will be running the shop vac for this, so I'm going to cut the sound down on the video. And this is actually pretty quiet. I'll take one of these halves off when I'm done and show you what kind of surface finish to expect using this type of cutter. Let's get right down on it. Check it out. The edge is absolutely beautiful. There is zero burning on the inside of that. That was not sped up. That was real time. And this material can be quite tough on standard cutters, but this little guy right here, that thing is amazing. Let's pull one of these off, put it on the bench, and show you the finish. And I don't think you can complain at all about that finish. That is absolutely beautiful. There is a slight raised feeling on here. I don't know if I can actually get that on the camera or not. This is not glass smooth like you would expect with a nice uh, two flute or four flute carbide. When I do these pieces, and I do a lot of these guys, when I do these I will run the perimeter with that cutter and then I will finish it up with a two flute carbide and it gives a glass smooth finish on the edge. This little mark right here is when I stop momentarily to check the camera frame. So there is a substantial load on it. But that cutter walked through this material like it wasn't even there. I couldn't have even told you when the cutter was making contact if it wasn't for the sound. Absolutely flawless and no heat. Not burned at all. Just beautiful. If you don't have one of those cutters, get one. You're going to be happy if you ever have to cut a phenolic or a uh, limit linen, linen, glass, epoxy base laminate like this. You're going to be glad it's in the box. Thanks for watching.